So this is the Bold and Unfiltered with Joe, and we don't bow down to academia, and we sure the hell don't censor the truth. So let me ask you this. What happens when a Harvard-trained genius calls out the field of theoretical physics for being a rigged game? Eric Weinstein isn't just poking the bear. He's tearing the whole gatekeeping structure down. And Sean Carroll, he's the face of the old guard, pretending there's no crisis, while insiders whisper about a total collapse. Welcome to a reality check. The establishment hopes you ignore. Is, uh, actually, I'm glad that this is happening because this is sort of what happens when you tangle with the group of people who are supportive of this program. I did not say uh, what I think Sean is choosing to either infer incorrectly or imply uh, that somehow the world is not quantum mechanical or quantum field theoretic and that somehow gravity is given a hall pass to go home and enjoy a relaxation where everyone else has to work hard. Um, what I said was that um, the idea of forcing gravity to submit to the same quantization procedures that have been successfully applied to other forces and to matter uh, has not worked. It has stagnated the field and that quantum harmonization is far more important. You could also decide to geometrize the quantum rather than quantize gravity and thus quantize the geometry. So because Sean's framework precludes somebody saying something outside the framework, the inference is, is that someone ignorantly just said that gravity can be kept out of uh, the quantum framework, which I absolutely don't say. You'll also notice that Sean did not choose to take issue with the fact that one of these is a gauge theory and another one isn't a gauge theory. And so that there is a problem with gauging gravity and what that means, and the fact that we're getting no actual progress in the harmonization of gravity with the quantum that can uh, give us a green light and tell us where we're going. Like I would happily cede to Sean all sorts of things, like the string theorists are by far the smarter group of uh, all people trying to go beyond the standard model in general relativity. I would further see that if the task is to quantize gravity directly, the string theorists and the string theory program have been more successful. But what you just saw is an example of what is actually going catastrophically wrong in the field, that a dominant narrative that has been perseverated into an as if reality has created two teams, a smart team that gets it and a dumb team that just does it. And right there, Weinstein just dropped the real reason theoretical physics is stuck in neutral. It's not bad math. It's tribalism, ego, and fear. Two teams, the smart insiders and the so-called outsiders. And God forbid you challenge the status quo. You don't get debate. You get blacklisted. That kind of toxic sociology is the true problem. And my guess is that that will recur multiple times during this thing is that I will not be heard and that Sean will continue to have a version of Eric that lives in his head, uh, which shares my name, but not my understanding nor my beliefs. And that is, of course, if we get past the hurdle of whether we're all here at all. Um, now, Eric, Eric, you've come up with an alternative theory of everything. It's based around geometric unity. And my understanding is it's, it's a proposed framework aiming to unify the fundamental forces of nature, including gravity and quantum mechanics within a single geometric structure, introducing a 14-dimensional manifold that extends space-time and embeds known particles and forces into a larger mathematical context. And the observation we had here in the research is that while ambitious, the theory remains largely unpublished and peer-reviewed literature, has not yet been formally tested or widely accepted by the physics community. Now, because you're so uh, smart about this stuff, your geometric unity paper is 69 pages long, extremely complex, way over my head. So we did what everyone in my position does these days. We went onto YouTube and saw uh, if we could find anybody who'd analyzed it and had a conclusion. And we found this. Thank you to Eric Weinstein. It's an avant-garde and creative theory. Kurt here, several months later, this has been so long in the making, geez, you have no idea. Anyhow, I wanted to say that I mean what I just said. I may have said this before in the iceberg, and if I haven't, I should have because it bears repeating. I haven't seen a theory like this come from any single individual ever. Not one that's this fleshed out or has this amount of unexampled connections within itself, as well as to what's known as the theoretical physics backbone that we talked about earlier. 
Now, Eric, um, there's lots of people doing stuff like that about it. Um, why do you think that the mainstream physics world is not taking this seriously enough? Well, first of all, I disagree. You see, part of what's going on is that Sean is part of a group of physics influencers who are constantly spreading misinformation, which leads to a climate of fear. Um, you know, I, I, for example, found the following quote of Sean, what I really, really want to get across to the audience is that nobody in physics departments is discussing this with other people in physics departments. Now, I don't happen to be coming to you from a physics department at the moment, but I happen to be on a five day visit to a leading physics department. Um, and in this situation, uh, I just had a nine hour conversation and talk with three hours or four hours rather of that being an explication of geometric unity. What Sean is doing constantly is attempting to say, look, let's do some pattern matching. We have a man, uh, generously in midlife. He's not trained in the subject. He doesn't appear to accept the quantum gravity program. Uh, he appears to be possessed of the idea that a single individual, Ed Witten, caused all sorts of people who aren't sheep uh, to cohere into a single framework that has been perseverated and uh, doesn't seem to produce fruit. Um, he has a telling of the tale that is, first of all, just not courageous. It's, it's at odds with the reality. Uh, from my experiences in this physics department, um, what I can tell you is that we have a situation in which everybody sees the problems. And so when Sean does a four hour, um, podcast, which I think maybe three hours I'd recommend to anybody because Sean is one of the best explainers and also extremely good at mathematics and keeping true to actual physics in terms of his understanding, um, you know, he, he then goes into this thing that there is no crisis in theoretical physics. And as one of my physics colleagues said last night, that line isn't just clever, it's devastating. Weinstein is exposing an unspoken code of silence. Sean Carroll and his influencer clique want the public to believe everything's fine. Meanwhile, even top physics are admitting there is crisis of stagnation. New ideas get shot down, not because they're wrong, but because they come from the wrong people. Geometric unity might be brilliant, but it's not a part of the club, so it gets ignored. The first rule of Physics Fight Club is don't talk about the problems with Physics Fight Club. Uh, there is a self-evident crisis. Every, I can show it to you numerically. Uh, somehow, the idea is that a small number of people who are either at the top of the physics influencer pile, which is where I would put Sean, or at the top of the uh, prestige pile in research, have held a view that is completely at odds with reality, which whose key feature is the exclusion of different perspectives. So when, for example, I, I can tell, uh, I, can, I probably can guess the AI peers from which you got the analysis of geometric unity. Uh, what you see is a very strange situation where a group of people go around attempting to throw shade on anyone who questions whether there's a massive problem in physics that everybody uh, who's actually in the game uh, can see with their own eyes. Now, if you ask me what's going on with geometric unity, I can say something very simply that because you have a very large viewership, will go out to many people, you won't understand it, but I'll, it'll be over very quickly and it should be an astounding comment. If you take a Lorentzian metric is a section of a, a bundle of pointwise Lorentz metrics and pull back the vial, positive vial spinners uh, with suitable um, pathing to maximal compact subgroup, you get one generation of petit salam grand unified fermion. Now that was very quick, but what it really just said is that this is where Eric drops the bomb. He's not just waving theories around, he's making claims that should shake the field. General relativity might already contain the structure of standard model. That's not a crackpot rant. That's a direct challenge to people pretending to innovate as only valid when it comes from inside their gated community. And yet they won't engage with it because if Weinstein's right, the whole physics hierarchy falls apart. General relativity knows the standard model. Anybody of Sean's ability should be able to parse that 20 second sojourn and say, is that something we know? Is that something that might be interesting? 
Then we will, what we'll have is we'll have the typical physicist large language model conversation in which physicists will ask, do you have a new prediction at anything at electroweak scale? Which is a question that doesn't get asked to the string theorists. So you have a differential treatment in which the physicists remember what physics used to be like in the mid 20th century when they're hearing a competitor and they choose to forget it when they're hearing something that comes from this other community. Hence, I think what you're going to find is if you look at this three hour uh, documentary that was just made on geometric unity, which in itself has flaws by a person who does not have a PhD, it evidences the highest level of understanding of geometric unity found in a second person over 41 years of trying to have conversations with physicists. So let's call it what it is, a takedown of institutional arrogance. Eric Weinstein isn't asking for approval. He's lighting a match on the house of cards. And Sean Carroll, he's too comfortable, too protected, and too afraid to admit the system's broken. This is Bold and Unfiltered with Joe. Subscribe, drop a comment, and share it with someone who's tired of being gaslit by the elites in a lab coat.